Hi, Hi. I'm Jason Hill. And I'm James Blackburn. And, and I'm <laughs> Danny Lensky. <laughs> yeah, the ventriloquist act really worked well. Right? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm so glad we rehearsed that. Yeah, crash and burn. <laughs> and this is No Joke Survival. Preparations for the average family. And uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about bugging out. Bugging out. Not the insects, not the yes. same thing. No. And why that's so important. And, you know, a lot of people have different visions of what bugging out is and running to the hills and things like that. But for our purposes, what this is is being prepared in case something happens, a uh, natural disaster or crisis. Um, and some examples would be like a fire. You know, and recently in Colorado, they had some real bad wildfires where, yep. you know, they may be in one area, but then the winds change mm -hmm. and then quickly they're evacuating people. Mm -hmm. And someone shows up at your house, law enforcement, and they're like, get out right yeah. now. Yeah. And you don't have the time to even think about what you're going to grab. And so having a bag that has some essential items in it, personal items, information, is, is critical because you may literally have just that one bag to grab and you might lose your home and everything else. Well, and it's really, it's really very, very much a good idea, I guess you could say, to, to have that because when, <laughs> when the tornado had hit my house back in 95, we had always planned it, you know, we prepared for it and whatnot, but the irony was is that the time that we had the least amount of preparation time was the time that the tornado hit our house. And so we actually unfortunately got kind of caught with our hands down or our pants down, our hands down. <laughs> done done. Uh, and so we ended up having to play catch up afterwards. I mean we had water stored, you know, in a in a very good place that and in our house. So it made it through, so we had water, but we ended up having to get out of the house what was left of it ASAP, so we didn't even have clothes, you know, yeah. with us because all of our clothes were upstairs in our bedrooms and or gone out of the garage that we had had them stored in. So yeah, Right. And Jason, I've seen your bug out bag and, and if I ever have an emergency, I'm gonna grab yours. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Because you are prepared. Now I have one too, it has my basics first first aid and and different things, water filter, stuff like that, that you may need, obviously, in an emergency situation. But I'm really impressed by yours because I've seen it, and it, you could use yours to, to go out in the mountains and survive if you had to. Oh, shucks. So, <laughs> well, that's okay. And I actually have uh, different levels. So I have like a smaller one that I carry in my vehicle at all times um, with some basic survival stuff, a little bit of food, water, way to start fire, filter water. Um, I'm, I'm kind of about repetition, having multiples, yeah. so that if I'm out at the grocery store and an earthquake hits and the roads are blocked for me to get home to my main bug out bag, I at least have a smaller bug out bag in my vehicle and I have something. To hold you over. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I keep the similar thing in my, in my truck too because obviously where we live, there's a lot of big spaces between towns. Mm -hmm. And if you're going off the beaten path like we do, well, your vehicle could get stuck, and you got that emergency bag with you. You could you could stay the night comfortably and signal for help or whatever you need. So. Yep. Well, and if you you know, and if you're thinking that you're invincible and you end up going out in weather that you might not be expecting, and all of a sudden you end up getting caught in a snowstorm or something, it's so much better to have just a little something there versus thinking, oh well, I'm gonna either stay in my car and freeze or try and make a little snow igloo or something versus having just some blankets. I always have a, during the winter time, I always have a little bag of kitty litter and a shovel in my trunk. Yep. Uh, so. yep. Very good idea. And especially, uh, you know, obviously it weights down the rear of the car, but mm -hmm. also gives you that traction you need if yep. you need to get out of the snow. Uh, other reasons for a bug out bag? Resources could be used up, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you could have an emergency in your area like like we did here seven years ago when we got that massive snowstorm and in four days of being cut off from the world, I saw the grocery stores empty. Yeah. So it was good to, to have a backup already ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You run out of resources, you may need to go to a friend or a family member's place and hang out with them and you want to be able to grab your, your important stuff and go. Well, and the stores might be empty because of social unrest as well, just something, something bigger political that might be going on as right now, a, you know, government shutdown, can't go to 
parks or anything, <laughs> but you know. That's a bummer. <laughs> but you know, when we come back, we're going to discuss in depth. So we're going to go through the bug out bag and uh, show you the actual items that you should have in there. Welcome back to No Joke Survival. Preparations for the average family. I'm still Jason Hill. And I'm still James Blackburn. <laughs> and today we are still talking about bug out bags and why it's important to have one. And uh, again, just to recap, it's not necessarily for running to the hills or get, you know, that type of thing, but if there's a, an earthquake, a flood, a fire, something where all of a sudden you've got to literally leave your home immediately. Yep. You want to have some items that will help keep you and your family uh, alive and safe. And um, so we're going to go through this bag and uh, just talk about some of the items that are good to have in a bug out bag. Yeah. And why do they call them bug out bags? Is there um, a reason for that? Because you have such good stuff in here, you want to keep the bugs out. All right. Well, that makes sense, I guess. <laughs> so, all right. Well, what there do, is what do we food got? in here. Um, and no particular order, but we have lights because if you're traveling in the darkness it sometimes helps to have a light source well especially on the headband version there too because that you know hands-free operation and uh, you can travel around and uh, some of those have a variety of uh, different lights on them night vision and stuff like that right so i think you got it on upside down i do yeah <laughs> okay so much for that yeah, idea knows how to use it <laughs> i also have a gps which is good for navigating um, as long as you have batteries in it and they're nice. good to go uh, it'll help you to uh, get out of the area okay there's so many pockets on this I thing know, it's uh, awesome man. i want to talk briefly about this too and and that this looks like just a regular camping backpack and so you kind of want to look as inconspicuous as possible um, some people use these military backpacks and right. it, it kind of sends out a signal like, hey, maybe they got some really cool stuff in that bag. Right, yeah. where this could be just, they may not even think about it because it looks like your average yeah. uh, backpacking gear. Might just have a sleeping bag in there. Nice. Um, so I got some webbing, which is really good for um, uh, tying things up or, or yep. whatever. Uh, this here, these are wilderness survival cards playing cards so uh, you can look up like disasters or first aid and nice so you could be playing a game of poker and educating yourself at the same time yeah yeah very nice um, got a little tin here and basically got some fishing stuff in here hooks weights fishing line razor blades some extra batteries there's all nice. kinds of things you can yeah, those little tins, I, I'm amazed how many little things you can store in there. I remember on another episode you were showing me uh, the char cloth that you made in there as well. Yep. So a, a variety of uses. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Here, I'm going to give you that one while I... Ooh, is this vodka? No. Oh. <laughs> Although that would make a great barter <laughs> item. Yeah, it would. I'm going to have some anyway, even if it's just water. <laughs> ah, mm. Duct tape. I love this stuff. It's got so many uses and... Uh, not so, just for ducks anymore. That's right. Yeah. So, so that's even awesome. a, even for the weight, I like to have it because uh, you can just yeah. you can repair vehicles, repair. Yeah, all I've kinds actually of stuff. repaired a radiator hose a, once or twice just to get home with nice. duct tape. So it works. Not recommended, but it'll get you a few more miles if need be. So, cool. What else you got? Binoculars. Yes, love the binox. Can you see? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no. you see inside my head with that thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see through the hair. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the, the, the bird's nest. But if you're traveling, um, that could be a good, good thing to have so that you can uh, see your terrain or uh, yeah. look for things that might of course, help you. I, I never leave home without the binoculars because uh, even in a non-emergency situation, they're just nice for viewing if you're outdoors sure. and, and just traveling around. Okay, so I have... Just a multitude of stuff. Here's some fire starting cotton balls with Vaseline that we've had in a previous e nice. episode. Love that stuff. Got a signal mirror, some extra batteries, some more duct tape, some toilet paper. Nice. Toilet paper. Can never go wrong with that. Now, what do you got here? Uh, just some prescription medication. Uh, 
you know, it's one of those things where if you had to leave your house literally in seconds, you might not remember to run to the bathroom, to the medicine cabinet, right. grab your prescriptions, and go. So if you have some in your bug out bag, you're ready to go already. Have nice. some extras. Extras of everything. Lock. Fireproof matches. Yes. And Unless you're uh, talking to Danny and then they're windproof Windproof matches. matches. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's backstage listening to it. Right yes, now. yes. That's nice too. So this looks like an old cover for stereo and yep. you've reused it for water filtration. Yep. So I have water purification tablets. Nice. And I have a, another water straw. And again, I have multiples of things, multiple ways to start a fire, multiple ways to uh, purify water. Very cool. Uh, so that I have options. All right. What else do I got in here? Now, another thing is when people are watching this, there's a million ways to customize your bag. By no means is this set in stone or anything right. like that. This is just to give people ideas and to get them thinking about what they would want in their particular bag. Um, so I don't want anyone to think that, oh, you have to have these items. Yes, canned meat. Can't go wrong with canned meat because it's Food. in a can. And so it stays good for a long time. Ooh, Chili Mac, nice one too. Yeah. What else you got in there? It's it's a good question. What's you can talk about that? This, this is a floppy hat uh, with air holes for breathing your head in because your head needs air too, I guess, right? <laughs> block the sun. <laughs> and um, block the sun. Yes, that's the main thing. Get out into a hot situation. Uh, sunburn can really uh, mess with your health. Yep. More food items. Yep, can't so go wrong with the energy bars. bars. Uh, that's a little processed meat military product. Nice. That, which are yummy and delicious. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure they are. And uh, they have uh, processed uh, donuts too. Oh, or, I wish, right? Know, or dehydrated donuts, that'd be awesome. Man, you really are prepared. I thought my bug out bag was good, but yours is a little better. So what I got here, yeah, thanks. And go ahead and grab the orange piece out of there. This is a little micro stove. Uh, we featured this on another episode and it just screws onto the top of this. So this is the same one as, as the other thing. It just folds down like that, huh? Yeah. All right, very cool. And so you just pop that on there and um, uh, you have a heat source and you can put your canteen cup on there and you can boil some water. Nice. I got another some nice option there. Honey, because honey lasts forever. Yep. And it's a nice little sugar pick me up, or you can uh, improve your food with it. Honey goes good on everything. Salt and pepper. Sweet. Yeah, people don't think about that. Just a little bit of seasoning can go a long way when you're out in the mountains, uh, whether it's a survival moment or not. You know, it's nice to have something that tastes a little bit better. Yep. Now, uh, I think it's time for our beginner's box. We didn't even get through all the items that you could have in a bug out bag, but let's bring Danny in because she's got some important ones. I think she's backstage. Danny! Danny. It's there such a is. small box because you have such a giant bag. So <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm just not going to bother with a box if we're going to run out of room here. But I have a couple items here and I, yeah, I thought I saw that. Just kind of to touch on this again. I mean, you want to have your prescription medications because the last thing you want to do is run out the door and think, oh no, I wish I had, and then it might be burned down in your house by the time you remember. Mm -hmm. um, another important item that, yeah, that you might not think about until yeah. you need it is a can opener. And this mm -hmm. is, you know, the most basic of the basic kind of can yep. openers there is out there. If you don't know how to use it, you should educate yourself before you need to use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Don't wait till the emergency arises. Exactly. And this one here is, as we had talked about uh, in a previous episode, I believe, is here, this one in particular is an all-weather notebook. But in here, you have all of your contact information for those people that you would want to contact or in, se in the sense of a, a phone tree, which I believe uh, we'll talk about. You can contact your folks and they'll, they can contact other people for you if necessary. Phone numbers, addresses. And the nice, nice thing about that is if it does get wet, you don't lose the information. Exactly. A regular so, notebook. So the pages last through water? Oh, yeah. They so, would. Nice. Very they cool. Would. See the tic-tac-toe game in there from earlier. This, I, I, 
is a USB. But maybe that's yeah, a... uh, this represents anything that's important to you mm -hmm. uh, documentation-wise. This could be your birth certificates, uh, marriage certificates, stocks, bonds, right. a deed to your house, um, uh, shot records, uh, kids' information, um, military documents, DD-214, anything that you wouldn't be able to retrieve yeah place. can't get this right. giant your box. files got burned mm -hmm. in a fire you know if you had a copy of all that on a little flash drive right here then when you're bugging out yep you got it all go. exactly yeah. Yeah. you don't have to give yourself a hernia trying to carry the giant box of files <laughs> right. so and you won't be declared legally dead because you can't prove who you are yeah. <laughs> so. and the point is that you won't in a in a real crisis you, you seriously may not have any time to grab that important stuff. But just having a backup of it, scan it, put it on here, and then leave it in your bug out bag somewhere in one of the pockets. Mm -hmm. And you always have a backup. Yeah. It's all about the backups. Yeah. Sweet. And finally, I just, you know, as I was heading in, some spare keys just in case you can get back home and in your rush to run out you left you end up leaving your house keys or whatever if you're if you have to bug out and you grab only your one set of car keys and then you accidentally lock it in and you know when you're in a situation like that the last thing you want to do is try and find a locksmith and try and find a replacement to all your yeah. keys so replacements to your keys yeah, and you're right, and in a lot of emergency situations are not permanent, they, they might be a temporary thing where you have to leave and come back later, so extra everything like that is, is always a good plan. Yeah, and so uh, when we come back, we're going to talk uh, about a few more of these items and, uh, and then get into our contest, and uh, that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, but we still have a number of things that we could talk about, so just uh, customize the bag to you. But make sure you have something as a backup. I said, like you said, taco. <laughs> Lunch time. Taco tacos. Bell, taco. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Here, Dehydrated here. tacos. Oh. Back to No Joke Survival. Preparations for the average family. She's Danny Lenski. He's James Blackburn. And that there is Jason Hill. Yay! <laughs> Good confusion. intros. That was I almost, went, I almost <laughs> went back this way and then I thought, well, we can't just do this and leave you out. That would just be mean. We'll do a circle. Anyway. But another great little video just represents, you know, having those bags, having them ready to go mm -hmm. to where if you had to jump in your car and split, you know where they're at. And, and it's just, just easy breezy. You don't have to think about it. And I also noticed in that video that they had a, a couple of totes that they grabbed in the garage that were packed and ready to go as well. So they're right by the vehicle. They just put them in the back and they were able to get out the door yep. in a very Food, short time. Water, yep. blankets, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff can already be prepared in those plastic bins. Nice. Yeah, that was really cool. I'm, I'm glad that uh, we got an example of getting out of the door pretty quickly. So, yep. <laughs> so what else do we have uh, here? Oh, there, you know, there's just so many items here. I have just a, a bunch of first aid stuff. So you have sunblock, um, I have contact, so I have some contact and solution, first aid, some soap. Um, another thing that's pretty important mm -hmm. I like to have is a, a tarp because you can make a shelter you can also wrap it around you uh, to stay warm. Yep. But uh, I like some... that color. That's the look at me. I'm here color. Well, Save me. Well, there's also a reflective one. So if you're trying to, you know, call for help, or if you're trying to gather the, you yeah. know, rays of the sun right. for warmth, and that's good to have. And that this is. is a waterproof jacket. And having uh, clothing is really important, I think. Um, because even if it's summertime, your bag should have cold weather gear in it mm -hmm. because you don't know, you may go three or four months without having a crisis and that crisis may hit 
and you forgot all about this bag. Yep. And then again, oh, also, I have to leave and it's snowing it's outside. 30 degrees and all oh, I packed were shorts. So, so. I've got a, a down jacket. Nice one too. And I'm soft. And here is my waterproof pants, so I'm completely protected from the elements. I've got some cold weather gloves and uh, a cold weather hat. Yep, there you go. Oh, thanks. No, I have a cold weather hat. <laughs> <laughs> nice space at the top yeah, there. <laughs> I have a small head. Uh, along with that, I got some uh, thermal underwear, uh, polypropylene. Um, these work really well as a base layer. Yep. So, <laughs> so you, you can throw I those on. Out. And, we all have uh, hats. Stay warm. And uh, some wool socks. And uh, this is a shemog, but <laughs> so many neat things you can do with this um, as far as wrapping around your neck or your head. Yep. Um, if it's windy out, keep you warm. And, hmm. um, and you said it, and it, this nice. was called what? A shemog. A shemog? Us nice. ladies shmog. would call it a shawl. That's if I'm pronouncing it's it a right. It's a nice a fashion <laughs> accessory. <laughs> it serves a purpose, right? <laughs> yes, it does. Very cool. I like the color. It's very I nice. like it a lot, too. Where do, you, where, where do you get something like this? Uh, well, uh, as long as the internet's up and running, you can get them online. <laughs> as long as you get it before bugging And that's uh, probably the most popular place. They may have, uh, have them at some sports stores as well. You so. know, and seeing as my eyes kind of drift over back to our prescription medis medic <laughs> medicine stuff, again, yes. uh, something as well that I don't have any allergens, you know, thank goodness for it, but... Uh, there are bracelets, there are necklaces, you know, and whatnot that show allergens. If you have something like that, that would be amazing to make sure that you have in your bag because the last thing you want to do, if somebody comes upon you passed out and they think, oh, let me give you this, you know, shot of whatever, turns out that you're allergic to, would be no, no bueno. Yeah. To wake up dead, essentially. Yeah, yes. I hate waking up dead. That's me too. Last time I did fun. it, it gave me a bad headache. <laughs> Call that a hangover. Yeah. There was another <laughs> item. Uh, these are kind of more specific. These are repelling gloves. But having a good set of work gloves, because if you're out foraging uh, and you're collecting uh, sticks for your fire yep. or having to move anything, uh, your hands can get tore up pretty quick. So having a good set of leather gloves, sturdy gloves, and... Uh, a carabiner never hurts. Um, yep, lots of uses. uses on those yep. things as well. You can kind of extend the size of your pack by starting to drape things outside of it. Okay. Not so much to where if, as you're walking you end up getting caught on something, but this is, man, so, it never quite packs as tightly the next second time. Right? Again, but. <laughs> but our contest is... Bug out! Bug out! Oh, oh no! Da. Very little warning on that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no warning when it comes to The warning to is the end of the episode is my situation. Da, da. I'm taking this here lantern <laughs> with me. But realistically, as okay. they're still going to continue to bug out, uh, it is definitely worth mentioning, as we've been saying throughout the episode, this is for fun, but you don't want to try and grab all of your stuff right before you run. So that is it for this week's episode. If you want to find out more about us, join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash nojokesurvival. You can also visit us on our website at nojokesurvival.com. There you can find links to our videos on YouTube. You can rewatch the entertainment that ensues. And if you have any questions, you can ask us the questions on Facebook find out more information that we have on the different products that we've shown you here and I think I think we're ready to to go but oh what you did you take the spam with me <laughs> well I'll take this no, I'm, I'm good I this right. is really important to have. <laughs> come back next time and some of these other ones right here we have things falling on the ground oh I think I may have wet myself a little bit if you're up on a mountain you may want to go down into a valley, you know, or, or observe the area. Some lime. Oh my God, what is that? What is that, dude? I, I probably, think, probably a Sasquatch. They're, they're all over the place. This is important. You don't want to wipe uh, your backside with something that might be poisonous. 
you, what you want to do is, is is literally just sit down and and listen. I kind of blew my way through there pretty badly. <laughs> there was a lot of outtakes. It's back, dude! It's back! Ah! Where is it? There it goes! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You never know what you're going to find in the wild. I love it. Uh, or some sort of uh, area where there's, you're going to find people and be rescued. Oh, man, that hurts. And now for a blooper. While I was talking, I could feel them crawling down my butt crack. I'm Jason Hill. <laughs> and I'm James Blackburn. <laughs> and I'm Danny Linsky. <laughs> and this is No Joke Survival. Preparations for the Average Family. It's such an apt name, No Joke, because that's all we do is yeah. try to joke around and have yep. a good time. Yep. Yeah, we do have fun uh, making this show and bringing the folks <laughs> quality amazing. entertainment as well as information. It's amazing we get anything done. Right? <laughs> yeah. This week's episode, we're going to be talking about first aid and how important it is to have some sort of first aid in your home in case something happens. Um, and you can't either get to medical attention or whatever the circumstance. And that's the thing, in a crisis situation, if there's, say, an earthquake and the roads are buckled or the lights are down, yep. you might not physically be able to drive to a hospital um, and, uh, or, or a flood situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just so many different possibilities. And, and then if there's an extended crisis where, again, the, the shelves kind of get emptied and everyone's taking stuff, well, there'll be people that will be taking that first aid stuff as well because it makes a great barter item. Mm -hmm. Hey, I didn't get any of that food, but when you need to bandage something up, you're going to trade me that Twinkie for it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The Twinkie, that'll Twinkie last for bandages. <laughs> We should have a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, and you know, with first aid, it's not just important in a crisis situation, but just having it around in general. If you're at your home and, and you get a cut while you're in the kitchen or something, you have that first aid right there nearby, clean it up, bandage it, you're good to go. Or even when you go mountain hiking, you know, you and I and, well, and Danny, we never leave home without first aid. Mm -hmm. I even got it in my truck right now. Yep. Even just for going through the city, I always keep first aid mm -hmm. with me. Yeah, it's just one of those kind of no-brainer things. You, you should always have some sort of uh, Band-Aids, minimal, even, even a minimal yep. amount, something to clean a wound so that you can avoid infection and some way to bandage that wound so that it yep. doesn't continue to get dirty. Well, and you also need to be aware of your own needs. If I mean, if you're, say, a diabetic, you need to make sure that you have what you need. If, you're, if you have a large family with different kinds of needs, your first aid kit should reflect that. And then having, having a number of first aid kits, you know, is what I was taught was all, would always be a good idea. Yeah. That way you can have the main the main first aid kit uh, for emergencies and then a, a couple smaller kind of essentials in the vehicle or as you go camping and backpacking in, in your bag because you wouldn't necessarily want to carry a whole medical supply kit as, <laughs> as I mean, brought mine. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, that's quite the first aid kit. Thank you. <laughs> now, this is a store-bought first aid kit, and it, these things are great, but they, they're not customized to mm -hmm. an individual per, per, person, just like you were saying. Now, Jason here, he probably has a little bit more items than the average person being search and rescue and stuff. Yeah, and the idea, this is not a store-bought kit, but the, the idea and concept is to customize your own first aid kit with yeah. items that 
you will need for your family again are you diabetic do you need candy bars you know or sugar do you um, have other medical needs that take specific first aid supplies specific bandages maybe you need hypodermics uh, whatever you need to have mm -hmm. all that and so if you get nothing else get a little basic kit from the store so that you have something but Ideally, you will get a bigger kit mm -hmm. and customize it and put all the items you really need in there. You know, and something that, that my folks used to always do and, you know, they still go to a bunch of yard sales or estate sales, you can pick up a lot of, a lot of random stuff there. Uh, we yeah, have crutches true. because of that. We have a few different kinds of crutches. We have a stethoscope, you know, uh, because of that. I say we, they, they do, and I borrow <laughs> if I need because they're close enough. But Which goes to another point. If you are not prepared, know someone who is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why it's good that we know Jason. Right? As We're, prepared as we are. Coming to my house. <laughs> He's more prepared. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, these first aid kits, uh, they're, they're just critical. You should have some over-the-counter type medicines, mm -hmm. any prescription medicines. We're gonna go over some of these things in the beginner's box later on. But the key thing is that you, you have to have something um, just in case you can't get out. You rely on yourself to heal a wound or something, you know? And again, education, making sure that you know you don't ever want to end up giving yourself a disease because you don't know how to properly clean a wound. And when so, yeah. we come back from the break, we're going to go into more depth about all this. And uh, we're also going to do our beginner's box, which has lots of great items. Stick around. It's going to be a good show. Yeah, so we have, I believe that. you have a lot of good stuff. Welcome back to No Joke Survival. Preparations for the average family. I'm Jason. And I'm James. And in today's episode, we're talking about first aid and why it's so important to have some sort of first aid kit in your home in case something happens. And uh, we have a guest speaker today. I do believe we do have a and guest speaker. So uh, we should have Danny bring him in. So uh, Danny! 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 Danny. Oh. Pastor! <laughs> I can't. No, but seriously, it's getting towards that time of year. This is Dan and Reka, and I'm going to actually have to segue out here so we can work on our beginner's box. So cool. I will be back. Thank you, Danny. You're welcome. <laughs> Dan, welcome. How's it going? Thanks for having, having us on, on your show. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's your show now. We're, yeah, we're, we're not in charge. You we're are. in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we do that to all the guests. Uh, so tell us a little, a little bit about yourself real quick. Well, um, I'm, a, I'm a member of Cebola Search and Rescue with Jason. I've uh, been doing that for about three years. Um, I'm also involved in a program called uh, Civil Air Patrol, where uh, it's, it's a youth organization where it's associated with the Air Force, and we do wilderness search and rescue and aerospace education, a couple other good things. And uh, I've been involved in uh, research and rescue and emergency medicine for uh, about five or six years now. And I'm uh, currently a, a licensed EMT, and I'm working on my uh, nursing license. Fantastic. Very cool. And take a breath. That was mouthful. But it's good to know that we're here with somebody who knows what they're talking about, you know? Yeah, we could have used you on the last episode. We were, we were kind of... Uh, uh, what did you do to yourself in the last episode? Not quite as safe as we should have been with some <laughs> potato peelers. Yes, it was, it was quite dangerous. We almost lost an eye. <laughs> How does one lose an eye with a potato peeler? <laughs> you have to tune back later. That's right. <laughs> So uh, we're talking about why it's so important to have first aid items in your home. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe you could give us kind of a brief overview of, of what are the most important items to have for basic first aid. So well, really, the, the most important thing to have for basic first aid is knowledge. There's, there's a limit to you know, what gear you need for, for first aid. You really you need gauze of various sorts. You need something, some sort of disinfectant. But even if you don't have those things, you can use you know, a t-shirt to stop bleeding. You can use... Uh, Soap and water is disinfectant if you have nothing else. So the, the most important thing is to get the right training, uh, understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, so everything else sort of follows from there. And, and that's a good point, and I think it will come up later in the beginner's box, but a book on first aid. In today's world, we rely so much on the Internet right. and technology. However, when that crisis hits, we don't know if we're going to have internet right and you don't want to rely on that so you have to have to have a book of first aid basic exactly. first aid 
because you don't also want to just rely on your memory, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want to kind of self-diagnose. You, you're already stressed out. It's already a bad situation. Right. If someone were to get hurt badly, you, you know, you're not in that normal frame of mind. Exactly. So having something else to reference mm -hmm. uh, is really important. Yeah, I agree too. And at home myself, I have uh, two or three books, you know, and sometimes when you're at a thrift store, if you go through their books, you'll find some really good first aid ones there. And I found one that's very complete, goes through everything from bee stings to to literally making a, a, a splint for somebody. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's really, a, you're right, the books are absolutely a, a, a thing, great thing to have, especially if the internet goes down. Yeah. And there's also like a number of courses that are free, right? right? Uh, well, for, maybe not a free course, but uh, you can find you know, relatively inexpensive courses on basic first aid and that sort of thing. And then beyond that, if, if someone had an interest in, you know, sort of advanced level first aid, uh, one thing you might look into is the uh, certified first responder mm -hmm. license, where it's, it's not quite, you know, an EMT class, but it, it goes into much more, you know, advanced medicine than, than your average first aid class. Well, like your CPR classes, I mean, those are frequent. I see them advertised right. all the time. Right. Um, the local colleges have a number of different varying degrees of first aid, mm -hmm. you know, basic intro. Right. So it's something that you can educate yourself on, which right. is always important. And then of course, you know, we're, we're saying don't rely on the internet, but you know, before the disaster takes place to educate yourself, the internet is a great tool. You can find all sorts of information on there. Yeah, I was uh, looking at practicing with some sutures and there's videos right. for, like with a banana or like yeah, You can find a video pork. on anything on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. But I thought that would be fun to practice my sutures. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, that is no. a good idea. I never actually thought about that before. Yeah, I was thinking you were going to like cut yourself and then repair it. <laughs> no, <laughs> not that way. But, so a banana makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because I guess it has a similar texture to, to skin or something. Right. You know? um, so some other items that are going to be important are, are going to be some sort of meds. Um, right. You know, basically, you know, you need to start with any prescription drug you take on a regular basis because. You know, when, when whatever happens, happens, likely you're not going to be able to re restock on your, on your prescription meds. So you need to have more than you would usually keep on hand in case you can't, you can't restock. And after that, um, you know, some, some basic over-the-counter stuff, painkillers like, uh, you know, Tylenol or ibuprofen. Um, people with allergies you know, might want to with allergies, on allergy medicine. Again, you know, anything that, that you use on a regular basis, you're going to want plenty of. Cold medicine, cough drops, etc. And then the other thing, if you can, if you can find a, if you can get your family physician or someone else to prescribe it for you, uh, keeping some antibiotics on hand would not be a bad idea. Yeah. And then even on top of that, the, some of the, the not so glamorous medicines like anti-diarrheal, right. I mean, it's really critical because it, right. You know, if you have diarrhea, you're losing a lot of fluids. Right, yep. you get really dehydrated. That goes into your stock of water, trying to replenish them, and, and of course. so it'll run down your body pretty quick. All those types of things you should think about ahead of time mm -hmm. and have those in place. Right. Yeah. And so there are a variety of over-the-counter medications that you can keep in your first aid as well, right? Right. I, basically, anything you would keep in your in your medicine cabinet at home, anything you use on a, a fairly regular basis, you should have duplicates of in your first aid kit. So if your if your medicine cabinet stock runs out and you can't resupply for whatever reason, you still have enough to take care of yourself. Right. And you know another avenue, and we're going to touch on this in a future episode, is herbal medicines. There are a number of people that like to use tinctures or natural herbs mm -hmm. for healing. And again, it's just a matter of doing the research because right. there's so much information out there and there's so many different things. You could probably be growing some of your own right. uh, herbs or plants that you could use in an emergency situation. Very true. Honestly, I can't really speak to that because I've never really done the research on, on herbal medicines, but it's, it's, a, it's a viable resource if you, yeah. if you do the research. Yeah. And what about uh, surgical equipment for, for first aid? Uh, is that another good thing that you should have with you? I mean, obviously, you, you know. Well, not, not my, my, my take on surgical equipment is you shouldn't have it if you don't know how to use it. And you know, I'm, I'm not trained in you know, any kind of surgical procedures, so in my first aid kit, I don't have any of that stuff because I don't know what I'm doing with it. And honestly, you can do more harm than good with that sort of thing if you don't really know what you're doing. And That's speaking of which, we have some of those items in our beginner's box, so let's bring in Danny. Mm -hmm. Danny! Danny. <laughs> 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 oh, my Danny! Beginner's box! Beginner's box! Beginner's box. Beginner's box. Beginner's box. Beginner's box. All right. 
right. Well, I'm going to just pull these top two out real quick. So educate yourself. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> really great idea to have some first aid books. Uh, this one's actually a book on you know food and nutrition, so you can kind of work to prevent anything minor, you know, colds and whatnot, so eating healthy. Um, we have some basic things like cough drops. There's hydrogen peroxide, which, you know, no one should ever be and without. Dan, well, on, on that note, uh, hydrogen peroxide is not really my go-to for a disinfectant because it's not as effective as something like, uh, like isopropyl alcohol. And it also, uh, d in the, the way it works is um, it's... It, the way it interacts with your cells, it can actually cause tissue damage when okay. you pour it on a wound. So it's not going to encourage healing as well as, as a different disinfectant like, like alcohol. So, so th th this would be my recommendation, mm -hmm. not, not this. No. But it still works as a backup right. if that's all people yeah. have. It, it, it'll work if that's all you can get your hands on, okay. but th this, is, this is superior. Okay. Is so it a good idea to purple. dilute that with a little bit of, you know, if you have purified water? I, I don't see, see that it would change anything, right. really. <laughs> okay. So we have a representation of extra <laughs> medication. James, what did you do? <laughs> I, uh, no, I was hungry. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there were <lighter> pills. <laughs> <laughs> Those weren't candies. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I was speaking of, <laughs> speaking so of many. candies. <laughs> We have, uh, my mom was always, had always taught us, you know, just some hard candies because they last. You can't say that they've gone bad and they're right. stale because they're hard candies. But if you have someone who's, you know, going into a diabetic shock or whatnot who, and their blood sugar is just bottomed out, that's, you know, something that can hopefully, Reproduced. exactly. Yeah. And so, and now we have gloves. I think this kind of goes along with the surgical and you know, it may be kind of scary to think about having to do that on right. your own. But if I were in an emergency situation, I couldn't get to a hospital and I had a wound that was deep enough for it, you can get sutures. Right. And you can have gloves. And if you have as sterile equipment as possible, mm -hmm. boil it if need be, you can fumble through a surgery. Right. Hopefully you have the pain meds to go along with it. <laughs> yep. And the education as well. Right, but that's like a last resort yeah. if you yeah. can't get to a hospital. And, you know, on the gloves, you always want to be carrying some kind of you know, barrier device like gloves because you know, if, if, you, if you're treating someone else's wound, it's not so much a concern if you're treating yourself, but you're treating someone else's wound, you don't know what, what pathogens they might have in their blood that you know, may not be causing symptoms for them, but if you catch it, you could get a disease. So always, you, you don't want to touch someone else's bodily fluids because it's just not good. Yep. Yeah. Especially <laughs> since that nuclear reactor thing exposure that James had. Yeah, you know. that's why I got so much hair. <laughs> <laughs> I had short hair yesterday, so. Well, there's nothing wrong with long hair, so. Okay. This, this actually, next up, this is a stops bleeding fast. Um, I'm actually not super familiar, but it's just a different, different clotting sponge, different kind of items to well, help. If, if you don't mind, uh, the, the quick clot is actually something that was developed for the military. Uh -huh. It's uh, th There's a, a compound in it that's derived from shellfish that basically speeds the clotting process. Okay. And nice. the, the gauze nice. has this uh, this compound in it, and when you, when you apply it to a wound, it'll clot faster than it would with normal gauze. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, if you use that on someone with a, she with a shellfish allergy, you could cause an anaphylactic uh -huh. reaction and kill them. Know your allergies, for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah. So Definitely have, research it on the internet. Come back after the break. We'll have some more information for you as well as a fun little contest. Yeah, we're going to have a great contest. We're going to actually get to use some of these items. Oh, no. And uh, we, we thank you for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> and we appreciate yeah, all the some, tips. Some it's, aspirin uh, here. Yeah, this stuff is really good. Yeah. This twisted my ankle. What am I to do? Danny, Danny. When I told you to enjoy the outdoors, I didn't mean to roll down a hill. Well, I used to roll down in the grass all the time. I thought it was okay. Okay, well, um, luckily since we have a plan B. Okay. Yeah? You can't walk, so we're going to make a quick improvised litter and uh, carry you off in it. What's yeah. a litter? litter. A stretcher. Oh. The technical hey. term is a litter. All right. Yeah. You're not supposed to litter in the forest, so. So we are going to take the these jackets and we're going to feed them onto these branches 
and make something to carry you out on. Ah, sounds good. All righty. I am in quite a lot of pain. I fell over. Yeah, you sound like you're in shock. I guess. I hope you hurry. I am seriously injured here. I have lots of things wrong with me right now. So. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I might have a cough, too. I fell over, rolling down the hill. This is starting to actually look quite entertaining. So we're going to take good care of you. Awesome. Get you out of here in one piece. I have faith. Put that in. All right, what do you think? Oh. Is it going to hold? We'll find out. <laughs> Yes, we will. All righty. Well, let's help her over here. Okay. Pretty nice. Well, that Careful. actually was Slow easy. down. Slow down. Slow down. Don't twist the other one. Okay. Let her sit down. Thank you. And Watch your head. Try to... Try to... All right. Ah. That's quite comfortable. Oh. Okay. You ready? Yes. Take me away. You ready? On the three. One, two, three. Ooh. All right. Awesome. I've always depended upon the kind of strangers. All right, that's how it's done. Now we're off to the helicopter. Welcome back to No Joke Survival. Preparations for the average family. I'm Jason. And I'm James. And I'm Danny. And that video is hilarious. <laughs> it was. Yes, it was. We made a litter, as you guys can see, and uh, we had some interesting results. It kind of worked. Yeah, that's, it was almost a demonstration in how not to do it. I mean, <laughs> it was somewhat functional. But in the process, we damaged Danny's ankles. So our contest here in a little bit is we're going to bandage those up. Yep. Um, we did want to kind of go over Lord a few me. more items here real quick from our beginner's box. Uh, we talked about some over-the-counter medicines. Um, prescription medications are also going to be really important because you, you want to have that stock from uh, of whatever specific medication you won't be able to run down to the local store and get. Yep, have a few extras. Uh, another item that is good to consider for, like for me, contacts and solution mm -hmm. um, because I can wear glasses and I have some but maybe if you like wearing contacts you want to have extras of those uh, yeah, that was here you're going hiking oh okay. thank you this is a uh, moleskin uh, plus padding as it's as they call it that way you can just put it on you know put it on uh, your foot to make sure that you don't end up getting any kind of extra friction and whatnot. So that's pretty awesome. That's right. Well, and, it's a nice thing. And sometimes the, the smaller injuries, blisters, mm -hmm. things of that nature, are the ones that can potentially cause the most problems. Uh, especially if you have to go somewhere, if you're doing hiking or you have to go get supplies and your feet are all tore up, you know, yeah. you're not going to get far. So Very true. Thanks. Some sort of wipes. Alcohol wipes. Uh, antibiotic ointment. And uh, Very uh, good thing to have as well. Yeah, Dan was saying off camera that the uh, bacitracin is um, one of the ingredients that's really good for uh, putting on a, a scratch or a wound to prevent infection. Nice. Um, so with that being said, I think we should get going. Uh, oh, do you have your bandage? I do. Uh, no tweezers. No tweezers for this. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know how I got wrangled into this. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Get them feet up here. This is a here. contest. Is this the damaged ankle? It, 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 well, they're both damaged. You see both my ankles dragging on that? So, but, da, da, da. so we're just going to uh, try to bandage the ankle, and um, I don't know how we're going to judge it. You can judge which one feels better uh, when we're done. With, Sounds good. Uh, not too tight, not too so. loose. And go. Oh. Ah! Don't damage me further. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Maybe around this way. As I slowly yeah. manipulate her foot. Oh, I hurt so bad. <laughs> All right. This will be the best Holy video cow, ever. Holy cow, he's so much further 
I'm already feeling a lot of comfort on this side. But, oh. oh that's too much oh, on the foot there. <laughs> Sorry. To keep your, your ankle's hurt, not your foot. <laughs> uh, see, he's trying to keep my foot flat so I can actually use it. So. <laughs> not me. Well, You're not tickling uh, Sharia. You're not tickling Sharia. You're not tickling Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, <laughs> that's part of the injury. <laughs> bam, bam. Um, Apparently, stiffer ankles are. tickling, She's I guess, is a pain response, somebody told me. But anyway, that's it for today, um, hopefully. Oh, wow, you win. Come that back awesome. uh, <laughs> next week. And also go to our Facebook page at Facebook slash No Joke Survival or NoJokeSurvival.com uh, for updates and videos, highlights, behind the scenes footage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite entertaining for the behind the scenes. The Facebook you can, uh, page, you can also ask us all kinds of questions. Our website will have uh, any kind of more descriptions uh, on the items that we use. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, no, test of strength and will. Um, and then you'll be able to know how I'm doing. And some of these other ones right here, we have things falling on the ground. Oh, I think I may have wet myself a little bit. If you're up on a mountain, you may want to go down into a valley, you know, or, or observe the area. Some lines. Oh my God, what is that? What is that, dude? I, I probably, think probably a Sasquatch. They're, they're all over the place. This is important. You don't want to wipe uh, your backside with something that might be poisonous. You, what you want to do is, is, is literally just sit down and, and listen. I kind of blew my way through there pretty badly. <laughs> there was a lot of outtakes. It's back, dude! It's back! Ah! Where is it? There it goes! <laughs> That's awesome. You never know what you're going to find in the wild. I love it. Uh, or some sort of uh, area where there's, you're going to find people and be rescued. Oh, man, that hurts. And now for a blooper. Literally, I guess. While I was talking, I could feel it crawling down my butt crack. <laughs>